Hey guys, welcome to a new video here on the Blue Abroad YouTube channel. Today, I wanna to set the scene for what looks to be a very interesting 12 month period for Tom De Koning and us fans of Tom De Koning and the Carlton Football Club. And I wanna paint the entire picture of his contract status, why we are here at this point, how we got to this point, put a little bit of footage together around his year and look ahead as to what we can expect to happen. So let's go back to when he signed his last deal, and that was in 2023. And this was the footage of the reports when he was about to sign. Just take a note of some of the comments around here. Sydney, St Kilda, Geelong among the spread of clubs with varying levels of interest in the 203 centimetre ruck forward. But sources have said the Blues and the De Koning camp are moving towards finding common ground on what would be a two-year contract extension. That would obviously take De Koning through until the end of the 2025 season, which is significant for the player because that would be his free agency trigger, his eighth year in the game. Now, Jared, you would know that puts him at 26 years of age. That will be most likely De Koning's big payday. And that's how a lot of management companies do it nowadays. That'll be get... a Connors managed player, is it? He is, yeah, yep. managed by Robbie Durazio of Connor Sports. So a signature in the coming weeks, months, whenever it might be for De Koning, it's the latest in a string of big name signings at the Blues when you consider Charlie Curno in August, six years, Harry Mackay in October, seven years, yep. Patrick Cripps, six years, Jacob Wiedering was already signed for one more year in 2020, signed until 2021. He added four years. So it won't Sam be. Sam Walsh? Sam Walsh as well. Now, it won't be of that magnitude at this stage yep. for the reasons that we've just um, indicated, but Carlton supporters wouldn't care about that. No. It's, it's certainly looking positive for the here and now that Tom DeConing will So we can take him off the shelf. The so that was 12 months ago. Sammy Edmund on SEN reporting that one. Uh, signed the deal. Ended up having a really good 2024, which we'll touch on shortly. He'll be out of contract at the end of the 2025 season. So as it stands right now in this video, you can classify him almost as a, a pre-agent, as we'll call it. And so if we look at 2024, I think I think this year will go down as the year of the turning point for him. I thought we saw a bit of it towards the back end of 23. And I think the semi-final against Melbourne might have been one of the, the few breakout games that really saw him start to elevate. I thought the story of his 2024 season was one where he became a lot more confident in his body thought his aerial game really stood out this year. I thought that elevated to a level. I'm sure that's something he was working on in the off season, and I'm sure that's something he'll continue to work on. And then he, what we saw, you know, if you watch the rating show throughout the year, what we started to see was this score launch statistic start to really uh, elevate to, to a super high level. And, you know, he at, at certain points became classified as a midfielder. Early in the season, I remember the conversation around, you know, TDK and Pido, do you play both, do you play one? And then I think he pretty much blew that out of the water in this patch of form between round 11, I'll say, through to round 17. So this was Gold Coast in round 11, where he had the 25 possessions, 27 hit outs, played a really crucial role. More for player safety. So it's a long way to go and actually did well back end and not to sleep. A bit of space to don't argue. Back towards De Koning. King somehow just got a little boot on it. De Koning's been in everything early. Boyd. Flanders out of the side who's had a fantastic year and Davies comes in for the Suns. So a lost pregame. A goal is yet only one behind. They're down by 20 early. Again, it's a fast up. 6'8", 110 kilos. Oh, good lead from De Koning to the Rock. Acres. Sneaks his way through a bit of traffic. De Koning. Wall down back. Johnston. <laughs> Wits. Wits with the palm. De Koning with the clearance. The Coleman lead it. Ben King. Oh, perfect out of the middle. Down towards Kennedy. Flows on to the right. Moved it quickly, Brown. Yeah. You always tell me the forwards like. Love it better. I'd probably prefer that as well. The Ferrari, we don't want to damage it. Not suggesting by shot. Holding six forwards now, the Suns. Yeah, it's been a change, King, hasn't it? What we saw in the field. Cripps is just going to work and he's in there against Rao and he's again reluctant to go long. Well, De Koning came straight off the bench. He's almost the old yeah. sneak under the sprinkler. <laughs> Takes a bounce. Walsh 
Hollands. Whitson to Koning have been at it all day. Three have the Blues to take it out to a game high. No, but the strategy has worked for Carlton. Fantastic coaching. Half time. Here going. Those Hollands brothers. Yeah. You can see their GPS numbers. Now to Koning. Delays the hand pass. Touch ball. Just comes out the big boy. And they clear a pass. Followed it up with the game against Port Adelaide. Um, dominated. I thought his two best games for the year were Essendon in round 13 and then the Cats in round 15. Now, to play devil's advocate against the Bombers, he's playing against Todd Goldstein, uh, maybe on the on the older side there, not peak Todd Goldstein. And then the Geelong game in round 15, he was playing against his younger brother, who I don't think we had seen Sam DeConing play too much ruck, if at all. So, uh, nonetheless, Tom was dominant. Uh, and his ability to win the ball in stoppage and get it out and, and provide space. And he's so he's so beautifully unpredictable. There's an unpredictability about him. What we also saw was a little grab from Michael Voss in his best and fairest speech, where he identified that stoppage defense was something that we unexpectedly started losing out on. And after shifting a few magnets around, it gave us a breathtaking patch of football between rounds 11 and 16. We were number two for intercept score differential. Only Sydney stood ahead of us. A profile was emerging that was different to any other time. A significant transfer from our pre-season that was dedicated to impacting this number and it was taking full effect. Unexpectedly, the only phase that was working against us was defending stoppage. And so I wonder, does Tom De Koning provide the difference between this feature of ours being in the positive or the negative? I'm not sure, but I mean, Tom's not the best ruck in the league, but I think Tom's got this point of difference in the position that when he plays, the way that the opposition stoppage is set up, you, you almost because of his unpredictability and because he can either tap the ball to advantage, lose the ball, but he's also got this rare ability to just grab the ball in the air with his athleticism and get the chain going it just provides such an unknown for the opposition that they have to have him in mind and we saw that when he was out of the team after he got injured against north melbourne you know we saw a drop off in the entire team and it's no surprise to me that he won the spirit of carlton award it's also no surprise to me that our form was different when he didn't play compared to where he did play. And I'm really excited by the fact that we are here. We are at this point in his career where for so many years we've been talking about, you know, it's patches, he's building, you know, capacity, the body once it fills out. I think we're now well and truly at this point with Tom where he's ready. He's ready to play full games. He's ready to take control of the ruck position. We saw an interview with Nick Austin and Cal Toomey this week on Monday, where he referred to Tom as our number one ruck. Just before we let you go, we love looking ahead. 2025, the pool of free agents. Yep. Jacob Wiedering is pretty close to signing a new deal, but what about Tom DeConey? Any progress there on a new deal? Yeah, working through. We're sort of going through one at a time. Like, we'll Hopefully um, something can happen with Jacob really soon, and then we can turn our attention to Tom. He loves the footy club. He's our number one ruckman. He's had a fantastic year. Um, he's a really important part of our future, so we'll be working, working really hard with him and, and Robbie to try and get something done. And so it's really interesting as to what's going to happen because, as we heard, Jacob Wiedering is hopefully set to sign his extension. So we'll get that one out of the way and then we'll turn to Tom DeConing. And so I want to set the scene. How do you value Tom? I have been really staunch on Wiedering being our most valuable player. And I think he just about still is. But I think Tom De Koning's now put himself firmly in this conversation. And the reason is because of the point of difference that he provides. Now, if you look at premiership teams, you don't have to have a superstar ruckman to win a premiership. Darcy Fort is a premiership, play from premiership player and a premiership ruckman. So it's not that you definitely need a superstar ruck, but Tom does what very few rucks can do. The combination of his athleticism and now we're starting to see the aerial work get done his ability to kick goals probably still has some work to go he's kicked nine goals exactly this season and last season if that can become 20 to 25 then we've got a serious player on our hands and a guy that can hurt you in such a number of ways but yeah i, I think i'm not worried that he's going to leave 
which is really strange. I, I've always believed that he has felt his place at Carlton. I've always believed that he loves the place and he is a part of this spine. And I've never really worried that he would leave to go play in Geelong with his brother. I know that the Cats would love that just as much as we would love Sam DeConey to come here to Carlton. So, And then I think the fact that he finished seventh in the best and fairest, like I was watching that count. I was there that night. I mean, we're all watching whether you were at the count or whether you were watching from home. Mate, he missed six games. If he doesn't miss those games, you never know. He might have definitely been in the top three. He may have not exactly caught up to Patrick Cripps, but I think we're ready. I think this is the time now. This is, from here on in, this is the best of Tom DeConing, and it's exciting. It's exciting for him. It's exciting for the club. He is a guy that I have no issue about his performance and whether he puts in and whether he's diligent because the performances show and his improvement shows. So... What do you think about this? Are you mindful of the contract? Are you mindful of the negotiations dragging into you know the start of 2025 or even towards the end of 2025? No matter what happens when a Carlton star is out of contract, particularly one of Tom DeConing's caliber, the media will come and the frenzy will come. And we know that he will have offers for him, such is the, you know, the player that he is and the, the ability that he has. But where do you stand on the I'm worried and I'm not worried scale with regards to Tom DeConing? Let's chat about it. Goldstein, the target, got a couple of beat. And he was beaten by DeConing. Good ball for Walsh. Booze and Wolf. As you can see, so he goes laterally. Trying to draw the Essendon defence out. Newman back to DeConing. Stand! Elijah Holland's able to cut it off, goes to DeConing at centre-half back. Oh. And then he was the one that got rewarded for it in the air. DeConing with brilliance out of the middle. Kicks it straight up the chimney. DeConing. Wonderful. Go, go. Getting it in the corridor, which is really helping them. One inside 50 in the last 15 minutes for the Blues. DeConing wants to make it two. Huge couple of minutes here. To Koning, very short boundary throw in. He takes clean possession. Hoists it in the Kerno direction. Hopkins runs inside 50, 40 out to the square. To Koning kills it. Gresham cops the big hit there, but a great running pattern from De Koning to get back and help out. Yeah. But you're right, Sean. Really was the opportunity. Essendon and Carlton. De Koning just goes at the ball, gets the initial clearance. Koning tries to get over Goldstein again. Walsh. De Koning clears it. A couple of important clips. De Koning again to Cripps. And with that knee problem, Abs. Coming straight from the ground now. Marching back to 35. De Koning again gets hands on it in the middle. Govan talking with the Medicos. It sits up in the air and it's easily thumped through. Bit of brotherly love. TDK! the rock and straight through the middle but then after that Carlton boys Cripps got across to Sam imagine the parents though brother V brother well, they've got a bit of both there haven't they the scarf <laughs> and there's that streak 61 games now with a goal at least in a game Cripps Tony couldn't quite hang on the recovery is good Holly Hollands to come in and impact headbands everywhere to Koning with strength. Newman, Saad, Tom De Koning. Perfect spot. High up the ground. There's his brother Tom putting it in. Look at Sam there. On the ball. Picked up here by Clark. Bog as well. Hollands now. De Koning got the overlap run and McGovern. Probably should have given it initially. Now he does. McGovern wide. Mackay should mark. Some good ball movement here again. From the Blues, they only need a goal here. Straight away. It's interesting how he's coping with that. We'll wait for the paperwork to go in as Tom DeConing down a crib. Definitely uh, achievable. Comes a big couple of minutes. Kennedy. <whistles> Clean possession for Blitzarves, and we'll have a third stoppage. 
moves the body well. Atkins trying to pass through the... Past him. Soccer off the ground works. Tom De Koning. 70s and the 80s, amazing. Position, but they've seemed to clean that up the last few weeks. De Koning. Shot guy, so it's just that they balance off well against each other. Good, looking for Tom De Koning and his brother. Ooh. Crips. De Koning. So the sub is made at the 11 minute mark of the second quarter. Here's De Koning into the game. Get, get a bit of movement and some efficient ball movement. Get a bit of, bit of five score involvements. De Koning out of the ruck. Gave it to Cowan. He goes to half forward. De Koning. Come on. Off to Walsh who's full of run. De Koning giving them a bit of a spark. A deep kick to full forward. McCoy. Rainer at the back, here's Doherty to De Coney. He has had an influence. The Carlton fans are just getting a little more in. End up in the cupboard. Richly deserved, De Coney will mark this. Now that he actually takes a chance with the ball in hand, it's been the extra development in his game.